Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, our topic for today is Islamic economics policy. Uh, and the case study, uh, the case study of a country that we chose is Malaysia. My name is Muhammad Rizqullah Hizal bin Abdullah, 22B, 1006. And my fellow colleague is Zaim, Nazro, Mikraj and Hazik. You will see them during the next presentation. What we can understand from economics. Economics, by a simple definition, is a system that manages the four factor of production, which consists land, labor, capital, and entrepreneur. This, uh, this four uh, factor of production is crucial in decision making for the economy in order to develop and improve their yearly development. From this four factor of production, there is a question, the three question, the important question that a producer is really uh, need to think before they do uh, produce or consume is what to produce how to produce and whom to whom to produce and next uh, okay for the economic policy what is the purpose of the economic policy well it is the purpose to direct or regulate the economy uh, for example how the government uh, regulate or direct the economy is by three three policy the first policy is the fiscal policy. The, their indicator is based on the taxation or government spending. The second policy is monetary policy, where the government uh, regulate the money supply through interest and government bonds. And lastly is the supply side. The supply side is usually used for long-term investment or long-term uh, regulation. For example, uh, smoking. Uh, for example, smoking. The government educate and release some poster uh, about the harmful effects of smoking, but it will not affect uh, effectively uh, in, uh, immediately. I mean, there will uh, there will be effect maybe around two to three years in the future, which is not now. From the background, from uh, the background of Islamic economics, is that uh, it or it has already started from Rasulullah Sallallahu uh, Alaihi time, but only during the last recent centuries that. Islamic economics are being implemented and researched by the Muslim scholars. And uh, it has been studied uh, ever since 1940, gaining the attention of corporation and policies maker due to the global crisis that Islamic finance uh, re uh, has strong resilience against the crisis. Uh, it extends globally and affects Muslim daily, uh, daily choice and accelerated in the social media which, as you can see as a result, uh, giving opportunity to the local industry and to explore Muslim products such as fashion and halal food. And as we move, we move forward in what is Islamic finance? What can we understand and what is the definition from the Islamic finance? Well, Islamic finance refers to banking, lending and save, saving practices that comply with Sharia law. What makes Islamic finance so unique compared to the conventional uh, banking or finance? Well, the first one is that Islamic finance prohibit riba. Riba means interest. Uh, interest, and the second is that it prohibits gara, which is uncertainty. This includes in investment or in loan. And lastly is maizia, which is gambling. And what we uh, you may you may ask where is this uh, where can we get what is the sources of Islamic finance? Well, the sources of Islamic finance is based on primary and secondary sources. The primary consists of Al Quran and Hadith, Ijma and Qiyas, and the secondary sources is based on uh, Uruf, Istihsan, Istishab, Saad Zarai, and that are unanimously agreed by the Muslim scholars. Moving forward, what is the product of Islamic finance? We have four products here, but there are many more. So I'm going to go through only two of the products in depth. Well, the first uh, product is corporate finance. Uh, I'm going to explain about the al ijara al mutana ya bi al tamlik. It means that the buy banks of uh, the buy uh, the bank buys a product uh, as a representative as a representative in advance. Then the lessee then runs the product, uh, but at the end of the contract. They, are, they have the option to buy, which is in, in short is rent to own. The second is sukok. Sukok is like a bond-like uh, security, but in sukok, the profit and loss are being shared uh, equally to the 
share equally to the investor and the uh, to the investor. So uh, this is completely different to like uh, to the conventional bonds, the government bonds, which is that government bonds are based on interest uh, and the profit are only based on one party and not both party. And the third, the third is the Islamic insurance, which is Takaful, which I'm going to go in depth. Which uh, Takaful operate based on uh, Tabaru. Tabaru is a donation for non-commercial uh, purpose, a commercial non-commercial purpose, and to assist the participants in time of need. It is where the participants put their money into the pool system to mutually help each other in any period of losses. Uh, according to Takaful Malaysia that I've got uh, based on my research is they offer four services personal and family, medical, vehicle and housing which uh, the, main, the main purpose is a protection plan uh, to protect each of the services uh. and lastly is the Islamic product which is this one Mudarabah and Musharakah as you know Mudar, uh, Mudarabah is a trust, fin uh, trust financing which the bank provide the capital and the other party uh, carry out the responsibility like operating the business. Furthermore, the profit generated from the company is shared is in a predetermined uh, ratio according to what they agree in the contract. Whereas for Musharka, uh, the difference is that they are partnership but the partner uh, share has an agreement on the sharing, pro uh, sharing profit ratio along that uh, those uh, among two parties they will have to carry out the responsibility like operating the business not only one provide capital and not the other only provide uh, labor the limitation for musyarakah however uh, compared to uh, in nowadays is that musyarakah in mudarabah is basically seen as risky they need a partner this is because they need a partner that is skilled in uh, on how to manage your business because most of the time, uh, their partner goes to uh, a person goes to a bank and wanted capital to to help invest in their company, but the partner, the other partner, uh, and the manager is unskilled and lack of experience. This led the bank to having uh, this led the bank to have trouble making some money because their motive is profit motive, and at the same time they want to protect the customer from any. Uh, from any type of losses during the comp uh, during the business, Malaysia has been proactive in implementing halal foods economic policies, recognizing the significant role of halal foods in in its economy. The country has strategically positioned itself as a global leader in halal food production and export, leveraging its rich culinary heritage and high demand for halal products worldwide. In the era of globalization, finding niche markets with the niche products and services is challenging. Halal branding is a key requirement for industry players to make a significant impact. Halal foods has a strong demand in Muslim countries, but the responsibility for declaring products as halal is usually confined to a country. The halal industry has promising global market, but if discussion is held on the impact of export value, Malaysia's halal policy has significantly impacted its, its economy, attracting foreign investment and creating jobs. The growing demand for ethically produced healthy foods also create opportunities for innovation and growth in the halal food sector. Here are some of the strategic approaches how the, this policy is implemented in Malaysia. The first is the Malaysia has established a strong halal certification system, including the Malaysian halal certification mark to guarantee the quality and authenticity of halal food products. In Malaysia, Jakim or Jabatan Kemajuan Agama Islam Malaysia plays the role to give authorization of halal certificate. Nevertheless, both applicants and regulatory bodies encounter numerous problems, issues, and challenges throughout the halal certification application process. Delays in submitting supporting documentation, making payments, and finishing premises inspection are caused by a variety of factors, including a lack of knowledge about the halal procedure, inexperienced new hires, sluggish processing, and ineffective operational procedure. Inefficiencies are also a result of the systematic filing system, particularly in hotels and the multinational sector. Furthermore, the result of lab tests are not received right away, resulting in numerous businesses owner are not to pursue halal certification and instead choose to operate their businesses without it in Malaysia. 
The second approach is the government has invested in infrastructure to support the halal in food industry, including processing plants, distribution networks, and logistic facilities, ensuring efficient production, processing, and distribution. Malaysia is enhancing its halal food industry by providing comprehensive training and education for halal inspectors, food scientists, and other industry professionals to meet consumer standards. The Malaysia halal food industry faces challenges like product quality, certification standard, and distribution logistics, but it represents opportunity for growth and innovation due to the strategic focus on halal foods, which support global demands and economic diversification. In conclusion, Malaysia's implementation of halal foods economic policies has been a strategic move to leverage its culinary heritage and the global demands for halal foods through investment in infrastructure, training, and certification. Malaysia has established itself as a leader in the halal food industry, contributing to economic growth and diversification. Moving on to Zakat, throughout the Islamic history, Zakat has been a fundamental component of Muslim life and one of the religion's pillars. Islam requires its followers to pay Zakat so that the money collected can be a help for the poor to have a best employment in life. Unlike conventional tax, Zakat is viewed by Muslim as a means of purification. So the roles of zakat institutions are not only to collect zakat use, but also to distribute the zakat funds to the zakat recipients. Zakat is being collected from a variety of sources such as ind individuals as well as corporate companies, while later on is distributed to the eight groups of recipients like what has been mentioned by Allah in His Holy Quran. Uh, currently in Malaysia, zakat management authority is under the government of each state. There are some states which have been privatized. There are Zakat institu institutions like Selangor, Wilaya Persekutuan, Kuala Lumpur, and Pahang, Pulau Pinang, Melaka, and Negeri Sembilan. There are two important roles of, of Zakat institutions which collect Zakat use. Zakat of officers also have been assigned by the government uh, which they do these roles. Uh, next is the some aspects of economic of zakat. The collection and distribution of zakat have some economic implications. One of it is uh, saving and investment. Zakat is an obligation from Allah that every Muslim must pay every year, which the rate is 2.5%. Zakat can act as an investment, but its return is not based on profit. This is because the main reason for zakat is to help the needy, so that in the investment will be in terms of encouragement, to the people to be more active in the economy but the return is very low. However, Zakat can eat up the saving as it takes 2.5% or our savings yearly. Despite that, Zakat can also act as a tool that purify the world and the heart. Next is the equitable distribution of income and wealth and employment. Zakat ensures that the community's resources are distributed to the needy for basic sustenance. But recipients are encouraged to seek life food through work Zakat serve to supplement income, not to sustain dependence indefinitely. To, en to enhance the impact of Zakat, funds can be allocated for recipients to engage in productive activities, fostering self-employment and independence. This approach aims to transition recipients into the contributors to Zakat while positively influencing the economy. So next is the challenges. Uh, even though the total collections of Zakat on on from 2014-2018 is around 86.2 million to 122.1 million. This contributes between 15 to 27 percent to overall distributions to zakat recipients, encompassing the group of asnaf, which shows it is increasing. But there is for sure an issues or challenges to zakat institution in Malaysia. What the first one is in incompetence. The zakat fund distribution process considered as inefficient, inefficient because the fund is not rich, the receiver effectively. The increase of poverty number as reported in previous research shows that, that the, the, the dis, distribution is very bad. Too much bureaucracy is one of the issues that cause all operation become slowed down and time consuming. As for example, for applying education aid from zakat institution, it takes years for students to get the fund. In, uh, but in some other states, students are required to apply for education loans before they are able to receive the zakat. The second one is capacity building. The gift or distributions of zakat will solve poverty problems in a short while. Where the needy and the poor is not expanding at anything because they only depend on the next zakat fund. 
the need on a permanent answer, answer to keep the needy and the poor kids surviving their daily life is to look into some idea that might help them building themselves in terms of skills and knowledge. The help of monetary base can be replaced by funding poor and the needy, needy children to a training or education. So in the end, the capacity building tactic will have positive impact in develop the needy and the poor economies and standard of the living yet to turn the zakat receivers into zakat payers later. And lastly, potential payers, the zakat fund collection are sometimes decreasing even the popula population at one area is quite a number. This proved by a Zakat Selangor report of a 2 million Muslim in Selangor. On only 160,000 people paid the Zakat, which is quite shocking. This will, this will give a big trouble when the public are not aware of their obligation to pay the Zakat. So the method of collecting Zakat should be changed into new pro proactive ways as normally do, such as promoting, briefing and educating all Muslim in public and private sector. Not only that, a new approach such as auto deductions from a monthly salaries also helps the zakat institutions collect the zakat with a minimum effort. Okay, Wakaf is a long term charity fund and a type of zakat jaria, which is the act of freely giving a charitable donation that will benefit others in the future. The study of Uthman in 1971, among the first Wakaf studies in Malaysia, it focuses on the Wakaf law in several states. Selangor, Malacca, and Negeri Sembilan have separate statutes controlling wakaf, while others such as Kuala Lumpur, Putrajaya, and Labuan have provisions in their Islamic legislation. And these are the three examples of wakaf that is used in Malaysia. So the first one is cooperative wakaf model. This model strive for development of ideal wakaf plans. This model is also a public wakaf used in Malaysia and also raises funds for various projects, such as developing wakaf plans, building mosques, and schools, funding medical facilities, supplying amenities for Muslim communities, maintaining religious infrastructures, and purchasing vehicles for organ organizing Islamic events. The income gained by investing in this model is said to have sponsored these many sorts of initiative. And the second one is Doha, established on the 27 March 2004 by the fifth prime by the fifth Malaysian Prime Minister Tun Abdullah Ahmad Badawi. It's to raise the quality system to world class standards, elevate the socio economic situation of the Ummah via the empowerment of Wakaf, Zaka, Mal, and Hajj institutions, and also improve the management of Wakaf, Zaka, Mal, and Hajj organization in order to achieve world class standards. And the last example is Wakaf City Aisha, a significant Wakaf land development project in Malaysia. It involved the development of property named Wakaf City Aisha in Pulau Pinang. This development is a joint venture between the State Islamic Religious Council and UDA Holdings as the developer. Uh, the project includes the construction of various types of uh, residential and commercial units. The financing for this project involves a substantial amount with the total cost reported to be RM120 million. The development aims to enhance the economic growth and social well-being of the community in Pulau Pinang while adhering to Sharia compliance and Wakaf principles. And the next one, we move on to the impact of Wakaf in Malaysia. So the first one, uh, economic growth. Economic growth means that Wakaf has helped to boost economic growth by reducing the government's reliance on debt, expenditures, and budget deficits. The cash Wakaf concept in particular has been recommended as an alternate means of solving poverty difficulties because it enables the money throughout Muslim nations and accomplishes an Islamic purpose of social welfare. And the second one is the development of ideal wakaf lands. The cooper cooperative wakaf model has been advocated in Malaysia as a means of minimizing rela reliance on interest-based loan and outside financing to fund initiative for development. This methodology can help to construct facilities which is crucial for long-term economic growth. Chosen as the world's top destination for Muslim travelers, Malaysia can continue to stand out as prominent destination for Islamic tourism within the global Muslim travel market. A distinction it has maintained for eight consecutive years according to the Global Muslim Travel Index 2018 conducted by the Mastercard Crescent Rating. Next is the Malaysia's multifaceted 
economic policy. It is Islamic economic policy. When we say Islamic economic policy, it is not the same as the halal policy. Instead, it is something that relates with the Islamic principle or is Islamic law. So, this is uh, some of the economic policy in Malaysia. Some of it is the halal certification. When people travel, they will search for halal foods. So, it is uh, accordance with the Sharia. Uh, uh, next one is the Islamic tourism products. It's not just a product, but it, an attraction also included. For example, the mosque or even museums. Uh, which uh, there is a cultural heritage or even Islamic arts. The last one is the Islamic Tourism Center, which is very important organization in Malaysia. They focus the, on developing and uh, advancing the Islamic tourism in the Malaysia. In conclusion, Islamic economic policies, including Islamic banking, Islamic tourism, halal policy, zakat management, and wakaf, has have the potential to contribute significantly to economic development, income distribution, and poverty alleviation in Muslim majority countries. The case study of Malaysia highlights the success of Islamic banking in contributing to the nation's real economy and, economy and Islamic tourism offers a platform for cultural exchange and understanding, while halal policy ensures that transaction and investment comply with Islamic law, prohibiting involvement in haram, as haram asset or communities and contributing to the sustainable development of and growth of halal industries in line with Islamic principles. The challenges faced by zakat management in achieving its poverty eradication objective and wakaf, on the other hand, as a vital institution in Islamic economics, has the potential to generate economic activities and achieve better income distribution in the economy. In summary, Islamic economic policies of offer a unique uh, and valuable approach to economic development that aligns with Islamic principles and values. By harnessing the potential of the five key components stated above, Muslim majority countries can achieve sustainable economic growth and development, promote cross-cultural dialogue and understanding, and contribute towards a more equitable society. Hello, I am back with Thank you everyone, Alhamdulillah. So let's end this video in here. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.